Welcome to Kansas Ag Report with your host, Brian Holman. Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Brian Holman, and here's our lineup for today's show. In Ag News, we'll take a look at local and national headlines affecting Kansas farmers. In our Ag feature, we talk with Assistant Secretary of Agriculture, Susan Metzger, about her trip to D.C. to testify on the waters of the U.S. And inside Kansas Ag, Kansas Soybean talks getting through a successful planting season. Then Farm Bureau talks tractor safety. And the news you need to know, we get our weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association. We'll look back at last week's market activity with the guys from Paragon. And we'll let you know about important events coming up around the state of Kansas. Glad you could join us. Closed captioning brought to you by Dick Edwards in Manhattan, selling America's number one truck, the Ford F-150, for over 30 years. DickEdwardsAuto.com Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. KansasSoybeans.org Ag Risk Solutions. Experience, knowledge, integrity. Your crop insurance solution, Ag Risk Solutions. Dick Edwards Auto Plaza in Junction City, home of this year's Motor Trend Truck of the Year, Ram Truck. DickEdwardsAuto.com. Here's our national headlines for this week in Ag News. Vermont is yet another step closer to becoming the first state to implement a law to label genetically modified organisms in food. As a district court judge this week partially denied a claim from the Grocer Manufacturers Association and others that sought to block the implementation of the labeling law. According to GMA, Vermont's law could put the U.S. on a path to broader GMO labeling policies that are different in every state. Other states already have passed laws requiring GMO labeling, but Vermont is the first to do so without any trigger clauses. The continued spread of avian flu among commercial poultry operations in Iowa has prompted Governor Terry Branstad to declare a state of an emergency. Brand said says that the proclamation will allow state agencies to better utilize resources to help respond to the outbreaks. It also authorizes the State Department of Transportation and other agencies to plan travel routes for vehicles hauling products related to poultry, as well as those involved in the removal of both live and dead birds. More grain stored on farms in 2014 could be the driver of the increased grain entrapments last year. Purdue Farm Safety Specialist says that there were more grain bin entrapments and resulting fatalities in the U.S. farms in 2014 when compared to recent years. Nationwide, there were 38 documented entrapments resulting in 17 deaths in 2014 compared with 33 entrapments and 13 deaths in 2013, according to Purdue's annual summary of U.S. agricultural confined space-related injuries and fatalities. One death was reported in Kansas. And in local news, one day after Senator Pat Roberts, the Senate Ag Committee chair, requested emergency assistance for poultry and egg producers whose flocks were hit with the avian influenza, the Office of Management and Budget granted Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack authority to issue emergency assistance for poultry and egg producers whose flocks were hit with the virus. The virus has spread to 14 states and affected more than 100 farms, resulting in the depopulation of 15 million birds, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The Kansas Department of Agriculture supports new bipartisan legislation regarding the Federal Water Quality Protection Act, requiring the EPA and Corps of Engineers to withdraw their Waters of the United States rule and initiate a consultation process with state and local governments. Assistant Secretary of Agriculture Susan Mesker recently traveled to Washington, D.C. to testify on behalf of Kansas farmers and ranchers against the current Waters of the U.S. rule. In her testimony, Metzger specifically addressed the EPA's failure to consult with state and local governments. The 2015 edition of the K-State Cattle Feeders College is planned for May 14th at the Scott County Indoor Arena and Activity Center in Scott City. Joe Walter, who has built a reputation for his work with horse and people, is a featured speaker. There's no cost to attend the K-State Cattle Feeders College, but registration is required by contacting either Justin Wagner at jwagon at ks.edu or John Beckman at jbeckman at ksu.edu. More information is also available at southwest.ksu.edu. 
Up next in our Ag Feature, we talk with Assistant Secretary of Agriculture, Susan Metzger, about her trip to DC to testify on the waters of the US. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. Please stay tuned. This segment brought to you by Grass and Grain, online or in the mail, keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. AB Flint Motor Company, selling quality used cars and trucks in Southeast Topeka at 32nd and South Kansas Avenue. Integrity Gun and Pawn, two Topeka locations specializing in firearms and training. IGPawn.com to learn more. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. I'm Dr. Frank Lyons, a physician here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. As one of the only standalone stem cell centers in the U.S., we use your stem cells as therapy for arthritis and some autoimmune diseases. I'm Dr. Andrew Poe. Here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center, Utilizing the latest technology under strict protocols, we're able to harvest your stem cells from your own fat to treat a variety of medical conditions. The best part about it is, it's a same-day surgical procedure and requires no general anesthesia. The 20th Annual Kicker Country Stampede, starring Blake Shelton. Yeah, the boys round here. Florida Georgia Line. This is how we run. Travis Tritt. Also from the Cynics main stage, Thomas Rett. Miller Lite, the official beer of Country Stampede. Our prices increase February 28th. Get yours now. Get them now before the price goes up. Like us on Facebook or buy online at CountrySTampede.com. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. Here at Blue River Traders, we have the greatest selection of rustic and western furniture in Kansas. At Blue River Traders, you can select from an inventory of Rustic Lodge or Western furnishings. With a designer on hand, Blue River Traders will help create the look you desire. Biodiesel, made from sustainable resources, is diversifying our fuel supply. This year, biodiesel will displace over a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. It's making our economy stronger and our communities healthier. It's working here and across America. Get biodiesel going in your community. Visit americasadvancedbiofuel.com. Welcome back to the show and thanks for staying with us. We're at the KDA office in Manhattan. We're joined by Susan Mesker, who's the new assistant uh, secretary of agriculture for the state of Kansas. Susan, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Brian. We've had you on the show before when we first started about a year ago and uh, You've moved to Manhattan. First of all, congratulations on the new job. Thank you. Thank you. It's an easy transition to come from the water office here to the Department of Ag. Uh, speaking of water, you recently traveled to Washington and spent some time in Washington and, and gave some testimony on the waters of the U.S. Uh, tell us a little bit about that trip. Sure. So this was a great opportunity, uh, not only for Kansas, but for all of the Midwest states to be able to uh, appear in front of the Senate Ag Committee, uh, hosted by our local Senator Roberts, and share some information about the impacts of the proposed EPA rulemaking of waters of the U.S. on Kansas, and specifically on Kansas agriculture. Well, one of the things I know you brought up was is a lack of communication between the EPA and the Corps of Engineers with local and state governments. Absolutely. That was one of our key tenants in our testimony. Uh, throughout the rulemaking process, uh, the state of Kansas, through the governor's office, and all of the cabinet agencies had the oppor opportunity to submit a letter of comment to the EPA and uh, Army Corps of Engineers, but that's all we were given the opportunity to do, is basically participate in the same way that any stakeholder would in the process. And we really believe that the states, as the primary implementers of water policy in the state, really needed to have a more significant role in providing feedback and input on the rulemaking. And what basically came out of that is the EPA and the Corps of Engineers basically have to go back to the starting 
point. Is that correct the way I read the rule? Where we are now, that would certainly be an ideal outcome uh, from, this, from our perspective of that hearing. The outcome of the hearing is that there was a bipartisan introduction of some legislation just last week. Um, it was hosted uh, by Senator Roberts and Senator Inhofe in Oklahoma that basically would direct the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers to step back to reinitiate the outreach uh, more appropriately engaging the states on developing the rule and then also really clearly outline some of the waters that they felt should be excluded mm -hmm. from the definition of jurisdiction. And one of the things that I, I think I would imagine Kansas is taking away from is, hey, we're already putting things in place to monitor our own water and, and manage our own water, and that's, I'm sure, extremely important for the other states as well. Absolutely. We have a really robust program in Kansas that's uh, led through the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, but with, is really stakeholder driven as far as implementing practices on the ground that improve our water quality. And we felt that the implementation of this proposed EPA rule actually would be a step back in improving water quality in the state. We'd have more producers that would be reluctant in participating in federal cost share programs. And then the state funds that we dedicate towards good monitoring and those types of activities would be now dedicated towards implementing the EPA rule and would detract from our ability to do the type of good practices we're doing today. Perfect. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back we're going to talk about what we're doing here in the state and maybe some new legislative action that's been taken. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. We'll see you in just a minute. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Farmers Insurance, your best protection against the unexpected. Call Agent Dan Key at 785-408-5459. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Blue River Traders, the finest selection of Western-style furniture for your home. BlueRiverTraders.com. Thanks for staying with us. We're at the uh, KDA office in Manhattan. We're joined by Susan Metzger, who's the new Assistant Agriculture Secretary. So uh, thanks for staying with us this morning. Thank you. Uh, two pieces of legislation that was passed here in the state of Kansas, very important to water. Absolutely. Well, you may recall that the, for the past 18 months, we've been doing a stakeholder outreach process to develop a long-term vision for the future of water in Kansas. And through that, we ended up with several phase one action items, things that we knew we needed to get done in the next year to secure our future with water. And included in those phase one action items were several pieces of legislation, uh, some of which have already been passed through the legislature and signed by our governor this session. Uh, a really important one is one that allows us to develop water conservation areas Areas. This is a new tool. Uh, we anticipate, it, although it can be used throughout the state, that it will be widely adopted in western Kansas. And it gives local water right owners, either an individual water right owners or a group of water right owners, to come together and develop their own conservation plan. And with that are afforded flexibilities. Uh, flexibilities that might include being able to move water or apply water in places that their typical water right application would not allow them to do. And the uh, second piece is legislation? So there's a couple of smaller pieces of legislation, though equally important, that came out of the vision. One thing that might be intriguing to hear about is in impairment cases, there is a piece of legislation that now allows the chief engineer to consider augmentation mm. as a tool for addressing impairments. Right now, this would be applied strictly to the Rattlesnake Creek subbasin in central Kansas, and it allows those local water right owners, if they want to, to consider a process where they could pump from their own water rights into the stream to help meet downstream mm. senior water rights if the chief engineer approves it. And I know something you were very involved with before you left the water office was the John Redman project and sediment and, and not only the John Redman but everywhere across the state. How are we kind of fighting that? You bet. So uh, good timing. We anticipate that this week we will receive uh, our approval from the headquarters office the Army Corps of Engineers to move forward on that project and be able this year to bring in the dredging equipment and the construction equipment to fully implement that project and begin removing three million cubic yards of sediment and restoring 1,800 acre feet of storage mm -hmm 
storage in that reservoir for the future. And that is not only important to this part of Kansas, northeast part of Kansas, but the state as whole. Absolutely. You know, certainly on a local perspective, it makes a big difference for the water supply for Wolf Creek Nuclear Generating Station and the communities downstream. As planting season rolls on, it's worth mentioning some health and safety tips for farmers. First, be mindful as you transport equipment on roadways. Provide the traveling public with many warnings that you are moving slower than they are. Make sure your equipment, old or new, features the proper flashing lights, extremity markings, and slow-moving vehicle emblems. Second, when applying products like herbicide, pesticide, or fungicide, read the labels thoroughly. Do not overlook precautionary statements such as those urging you to wear long sleeves and eye protection. Keep a book of product labels handy in case you come into contact with a chemical, or just photograph the labels with your mobile device. Third, store fuel away from your machine shed. If fire breaks out, keeping your fuel tank a safe distance from the buildings will offer the best protection. Fourth, stay healthy. Do not skip meals or rests. Without adequate sleep and proper nutrition, you will be operating at a reduced level. Finally, watch for children. Large, noisy equipment will attract their attention. Avoid carrying children on your equipment or make sure that they are properly secured. On behalf of everyone associated with the Soybean Checkoff, the Kansas Soybean Commission wishes all Kansas farmers a safe, productive planting season. This time of year, farmers are busy working in the fields and driving on the roads with their trucks, tractors, wagons, and other large pieces of equipment. To the impatient or distracted driver, these vehicles may pose a problem if safe driving practices are not observed. Slow-moving vehicle emblems may only be used for motorized vehicles designed to travel at speeds of 25 miles per hour or less on the road. Any other use is illegal. Remember not to rush when driving on roads where you might encounter large farm machinery. Slow down immediately when you see the orange SMV triangle and pass farm equipment only when it is safe for you to do so. For example, if a car is moving 55 miles per hour and comes upon a tractor moving 15 miles per hour, it only takes 5 seconds to close a gap the length of a football field between the car and the tractor. Accidents occur when motorists hurry around farm vehicles, resulting in injury or death. Large farm equipment making a left turn need extra space. They may be pulling over to the right to make a left turn. Tractors move into the center lane to avoid hitting guardrails or mailboxes that those following may not be able to see. Farmers will make every effort to accommodate motorists. Machine operators will drive on the shoulder of paved roadways whenever possible in order to give other motorists a better view of road conditions. Keep in mind that if the shoulder is soft, wet, or steep, the farmer cannot move aside because it may cause the equipment to tip. Above all, be patient, be kind, and stay behind. If you'd like to advertise your business on Kansas Ag Report, give us a call at 785-506-2508. Brought to you by Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldeseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. A.B. Flint Motor Company selling quality used cars and trucks in Southeast Topeka at 32nd and South Kansas Avenue. Integrity Gun and Pawn, two Topeka locations specializing in firearms and training. IGPawn.com to learn more. Impact Satellite, your local authorized direct TV dealer. Impact Satellite at 785-554-5974. You hear it all the time. Monthly payments of 289, 189, or even 89. How is this done, you ask? Well, with large down payments, low mileage leases, and you must qualify for all rebates offered. Can we do this? Yes, yes we, we can. can. But we prefer to give you the straight Great call, call, where we tell you all, all the, the information up front, and you make the decision on what vehicle and payment you want. You won't need bifocals to read the fine print here. Dick Edwards, serving the Manhattan, Fort Riley, and Junction City areas for over 30 years. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field -field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555.
Tammy the Pro Home Plus is all about providing warmth and kindness to aging individuals who find it difficult to live on their own. Tammy's team is made up of experienced caregivers and nurses committed to the highest level of individualized care, focusing on health and well-being, and assisting with nutrition, grooming, medications, therapies, and daily living needs, all in a warm, caring environment. Call Tammy the Pro Home Plus today at 785-383-7094 to learn how we can help. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research. I will take action against herbicide-resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand. And I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time, for all time. You hear it all the time. Monthly payments of 289, 189, or even 89. How is this done, you ask? Well, with large down payments, low mileage leases, and you must qualify for all rebates offered. Can we do this? Yes, yes we, we can. can. But we prefer to give you the straight, straight call, call, where we tell you all, all the, the information up front, and you make the decision on what vehicle and payment you want. You won't need bifocals to read the fine print here. Dick Edwards, serving the Manhattan, Fort Riley, and Junction City areas for over 30 years. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. Governor Sam Brownback has proclaimed May as Beef Month in Kansas. In doing so, he recognized the significant economic contribution cattle men and cattle women make to the Kansas economy, including a record-setting $8.9 billion in cash receipts generated from cattle during 2014. That's up more than $1 billion compared to 2013, and represents better than half of the cash receipts generated by all Kansas agricultural commodities. Kansas ranked third nationally in cattle cash receipts last year behind first place Nebraska and second place Texas. Kansas also ranked third in the value of beef production for 2014 at $4.68 billion. Texas was first followed by Nebraska. For some added perspective, there were 6 million cattle on Kansas farms and ranches as of January 1st. That's more than twice the state's human population of 2.9 million. In addition to utilizing this data to highlight the importance of the beef industry to the state, the Kansas Beef Council will increase promotional efforts this month to stimulate consumer awareness. These special promotions include the Kansas Beef Endurance Team running in two half marathons, utilizing social media to engage with foodies, and providing those within the dietetics and nutrition communities with the latest beef nutrition research and information on how beef gets to the table. Good morning everyone, I'm Chris Haverkamp with Paragon Ag, and this week we first start with the planted progress report. This past week we were at 55% planted acres for the corn crop, and the previous week we were at 19%. Now, that was a big jump, big uh, movements in the states of Iowa, Minnesota, Nebraska, Illinois, but Indiana and Ohio still the two states that are lagging in their planted progress. Obviously this week with the weather systems that we've seen move through the Corn Belt, we're not anticipating to see that big of a jump, but the fact that we've got 55% of the corn crop planted before May the 5th definitely indicates that we're off to a good start and most likely indicates that the crop itself will be in pretty good shape as long as Mother Nature uh, cooperates as we move along the course of the growing year. Moving on to the wheat complex, we also see good to excellent ratings just above last year's levels. And although we've had some issues with drought and with uh, freezing and uh, even some disease issues, we continue to see the wheat crop as a whole still in generally good shape. 
And unfortunately, this past week, we also had Informa step in and give us larger world wheat production numbers. So as a result, right now, everything fundamentally speaking, resting on favor of the bears. The only outlier is the US dollar. If the US dollar would happen to make a moderate break, we would anticipate possibly some short covering and a little rally in the week ahead. Again, I'm Chris Haverkamp with Paragon Ag. Have a great weekend. Closed captioning brought to you by Dick Edwards in Manhattan, selling America's number one truck, the Ford F-150, for over 30 years. DickEdwardsAuto.com. Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. KansasSoybeans.org. Ag Risk Solutions, experience, knowledge, integrity. Your crop insurance solution, Ag Risk Solutions. Dick Edwards Auto Plaza in Junction City, home of this year's Motor Trend Truck of the Year, Ram Truck. DickEdwardsAuto.com. Well, that's our show for today. I hope you'll join us each week for more news and information about agriculture in the state of Kansas. I'm Brian Holman, and thanks for watching. Here at Blue River Traders, we have the greatest selection of rustic and western furniture in Kansas. At Blue River Traders, you can select from an inventory of rustic lodge or western furnishings. With a designer on hand, Blue River Traders will help create the look you desire. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field -field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. Tammy the Pro Home Plus is all about providing warmth and kindness to aging individuals who find it difficult to live on their own. Tammy's team is made up of experienced caregivers and nurses committed to the highest level of individualized care, focusing on health and well-being, and assisting with nutrition, grooming, medications, therapies, and daily living needs, all in a warm, caring environment. Call Tammy the Pro Home Plus today at 785-383-7094 to learn how we can help.